Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube you know me as what? Epic Fantasy, that's right. And this is my latest tutorial. This is how to make a wizard's globe. Like, what's a wizard's globe, right? Whenever you see a wizard's lair, or a wizard in his chambers, or in his lair, lair he always has a, something like this. He always has this wonderful, interesting kind of globe of the whatever fantasy world he's in. And this is what this is. Um, it's similar to something called an armillary sphere which is a celestial sphere for tracking motions in, in the sky, but it's not. This is more of a Bonnenberger's machine, which is the predecessor to the gyroscope. See, it has different um, ranges, different, different axes of motion here. So yeah, so it can go one way, it can go this way, it can go that way, it can go that way. So you can get a look at the whole world. Love this project. And one more thing, Frostmorn. Getting a lot of emails from a lot of people about Frostmourne. I get a lot of wonderful stuff submitted to me. Very creative stuff. Amazing. I'm very uh, pleased with all of that. Friday, today's Tuesday. Friday, I will announce the winner. And I will then also announce the next giveaway. I'm running out of room here. I got so much stuff. I got to give some of it away. And <laughs> thanks. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real black smithing, model boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. All right, the first thing I did was made some drawings of what I wanted the Wizard's Globe to look like, and particularly the, the stand. And then, I and then I drew out a full-scale version on poster board, cut those pieces out, and traced them onto foam. This is two-inch thick foam. Then I cut out all those various pieces, shaped them, and used liquid nails to glue them all together. Now, this is the central column. It's... It's supposed to mimic like a wooden, uh, round wooden beam. And this is the frame of the armor, of the, excuse me, the wizard's lair, the wizard's uh, globe. Gonna go something like this. And this is all was a process that I kind of just learned as I went. But I used a bunch of different tools, including a, a little saw, a hand saw, to shape everything. But what we're trying to make here is the stand of it first. And then I used a rasp to give it that nice turned on a lathe look. I kind of find a rasp works really well. <clears throat> See now this is a mortise and tenon. Like this where that inserts into there and I glued those legs right into the central column. And there you go, there's the stand. Now you get a lot of leeway with how you'd like, you want to do something like this. And I ended up cutting away the top half of this because I didn't like the shakiness of it. I wanted to add more strength. So I cut pieces of uh, plywood and then glued those in with liquid nails. And this made it stronger to support the weight of the globe. With all the stuff on the globe, it ended up being pretty heavy. And so now let's look at how I made the globe. Started off with this uh, exercise ball, which was the perfect size and strength for what I wanted to do. It seems a little small, but we're going to add a shell to this, which makes it quite a bit larger. And the shell is made out of something called rigid wrap, which is plastic cloth. Plastic cloth is cloth that is embedded with plaster of Paris. So what happens is, you cut yourself pieces, and you soak it in water, and it activates that plaster. Really quite wonderful stuff. If you watch my projects, you watch my channel, you know I use plastic cloth for various different things. I, I really like it a lot. And we're going to do multiple coats, and the first coat is like this with large pieces. Because we want to just kind of make our first shell around the whole thing. I ended up doing three coats, and but there's some differences, and I'll show you. An important thing that when you're doing something like this, with any kind of plaster of Paris, plaster cloth, or paper mache, you always overlap your pieces. And that will cause it to be, that will make it nice and strong. Now watch this. See, I've overlapped this piece halfway over the other piece, and you continuously overlap all these pieces, and then you've got a nice knitted together strong shell. And this piece is against, just butted up against that previous piece, but then I'm going to put another piece right over that seam. So continue to do the whole uh, sphere, the whole globe, with this first layer. 
<clears throat> and it takes some time to because to let it dry but there you go the first coat is done looks pretty good well, we're really pleased with how this came out I tried different things that exercise ball was perfect for this and then for the th I did a second coat and now for the third and final coat I wanted it to be a little more refined so now I coated it all with square, smaller squares of the plastic cloth, the whole thing, all the way around. And it took more time, but uh, it, it makes for a finer look. And of course, I always overlap all those pieces. So there we go, it is done. So now let's get to the part you're probably dying to see the terrain and all of that on this globe. And this is um, <clears throat> the same world as is on my large fantasy map. So if you want to see a little bit more about this world, um, you can check out that video. But I sketch it out first with pencil, and it's looking pretty good. Get all the major terrain features, islands and the, uh, the snow caps and the mountains and the lakes and the rivers and stuff like that. And it's, this is a lot of fun. This, this whole globe project is just simply a lot of fun. So once I get the terrain all laid out the way I want it, where I want it, where all the major things are, now it's time to do a first layer of paint. And you can see that I use something called gesso. And gesso is perfect for this because you add a little bit of paint to it. Like you can see I added a little bit of blue. And what it does, it will seal all that uh, plaster cloth, but it also has tooth to it. Which means it'll still take paint well or it'll still take um, clay well. Uh, but it'll yeah it'll still seal and protect all the plaster cloth. So I started with the major areas, laying in the major colors, and if you notice a progression here, I started with the lighter colors and I worked my way to the darker colors. That's a good rule of thumb there. Start with your lighter colors and go to your darker colors. And now I'm working on my darkest blues. That's because it's much easier to paint your dark over a light. But if you got a light, if you got a a a, a, a now let me see if you get a light, dark color, it's a more difficult to get the light over it. And there we go. So now I've got all my major terrain features painted. And this is just as a guideline, a rule of thumb, so I could understand the terrain, see what was going to be where, where the mountains were, and where the rivers are, and all of that. Because we're going to actually cover all of that up with something called paper clay. I love this stuff. Now, you think of paper clay, it's not like paper, it's more like clay. But it's very pliable and workable and it's air dries. So now all the terrain, not the rivers, or the, or the lakes or the ponds or the oceans, just all the landscaping, all the land I covered with the clay. And this was so much fun to do this. I, I <clears throat> did a lot of experimenting with different techniques to do uh, like mountain ranges, to do uh, prairies, like look, see I use different tools to try to get different effects. Because you're dealing with a, a scale here. You know, see, so applying all the clay, first to get it on in a general shape, and a general height and size, and general like <clears throat> curves of it. And then I started to work more towards the details. Like you can see I'm starting in with some mountains there. And I forget how much I used, but I used quite a bit of this stuff. And take notice the river. There's none on the river. That gives you a beautiful bank. See how the clay is, forms the bank. So here's a tundra area. And you can see I used a very stiff bristle brush to give us like a tundra look. And now one more thing about the train is the ice masses, both on the, nor on the North Pole. I hate to say North Pole because it makes you think of earth but this isn't earth but um on the northern pole and then look see i can use the knife to shape out that big ice cliff kind of fun and i had so much fun with the clay it was a lot of work quite a few hours i put into it but it really paid off i really like it so once all of that um paper clay is dry we can start with the painting see the ice is white with a little bit of a light blue of ice melt and I use the same technique where I started with the lighter colors and moved towards the darker colors. See our tundra, our barren areas and desert and 
and the grassy foliage areas and deep rainforest areas, particularly around the river. Just, just had a lot of fun. Love this. And after this, I don't think I show it, but after this, I actually went back and deepened the blue of all the various oceans and whatnot. See, but coming along, this isn't quite completed yet, and I don't, I don't think I show you completed, but it's looking pretty good. You can see the variety of terrain, the islands, the ice, the polar ice, mountain ranges, big lake, rivers, I even got one spot where there's a volcano. <laughs> and then it's from here, it's all detail work. And it took quite a while. Detail in the river, everything. Detail everything. So now, now are we going to put this in there? We need something called gimbals. These are two gimbals. One fits inside the other, and that's what allows it to rotate on the different axes. So you can move it one way, you can move it the other way. It's like in a gyroscope. I first made my gimbals out of foam board so I could get the right size and then I trace that onto um, plywood and went ahead and cut those plywood rings out. Now I made three rings. Two rings of the gimbals because they move in different axes and the third ring is the frame gimbal that, that everything holds to. And in order to get the center cut out if you first cut a hole like that, and now you can get the jigsaw in there and you can cut it out. So there we go. And how do we mount it to our globe? Our globe is nice and strong. I use these heavy-duty wall anchors. You screw them in, one at the north and one at the south. See that? Like that. And then you can put, if there's a quarter inch, then you can put either a quarter inch bolt in there, or in the case of me, for this project, quarter inch threaded rod and what happens is as you thread that in it pulls on a clamp on the inside and pulls it up nice and tight really kind of neat and then we can put it in our inner gimbal and tighten it up with some nuts and then we attach that gimbal to the next one out at a 90 degree angle and then we attach that one to the outer frame gimbal circle, and that's what we've got. We can still see, I didn't, that's southern ice pole still needs some work. But there you go. Kind of cool. You've got a wizard's globe. So much fun. You know, you don't have to do something this large. You could do a smaller one for your desk or something. So let me just paint it up. Add some graduated marks. I used white and I used gold. I used a gold paint pen. You know, but there we've created a world. This is for the wizard's lair. This is the wizard's globe for his lair. I have more coming on that. I got a whole thing coming up. It's a lot of work, but I'm making good progress. And that's that. It is done. Congratulations. Um, if, uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you're a subscriber, thanks. If not, subscribe. I got plenty more videos coming. Um, Some is around 700 right now, and here it is in action. You can move it all kinds of different ways so you can examine different parts of the world. Kind of cool. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, Thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.